Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of uh, the farm system or farm matic let's build. So this one's pretty much just programming. I mean, if you really don't want to watch the program, which is fully understandable, or listen to my amazing voice, which isn't understandable because I have an amazing voice, um, just skip right to the end and you can see the machine working. In fact, if I remember to, I'll put an annotation in the video. So first of all, um, I'm sort of, I've obviously defined the side that the wire sticks out of. Um, and then I'm going to um, create a function that breaks the um, the wheat by triggering the correct wire. But then I sort of remember that that's a really slow way of doing it. So first I'm going to define all the different sides using um, variables. So I'll create one called break that's colors.brown, one called place that's, uh, sorry, blue. <laughs> I made the same mistake twice. One that's called place that's colors.brown, one called right that's colors.white, and then one that's left that's colors.black. And, um, and then I do something. reasons I mean they take a very long time to make we really really enjoy making this we want to make sure that's really good quality and because we've got um Hero T Pris in them now we have to make sure he's available to record as well this guy in the background by the way uh fixing all the broken wheat that he broke for me so I I forgot the set bit there. There we go. So now this function is basically the job uh, for this is just to wait a bit and then reset the bundled output. I do add the sleep later on because I realize I'm putting a sleep everywhere before I call it. So I might as well just uh, um, put it into the reset function. And there, there you go. So all the utility functions will go between those two bits. It just makes it easy to edit. Hello, Nipty. He's flying around looking at my machinery. I'm going to chat with him. What I'm doing now. I think I'm explaining it to Nipty. <laughs> and he's very patiently listening to me rattle on. <laughs> my hand's a lot better now, by the way, so my typing isn't quite this bad. <laughs> it's still pretty bad, though. I think at this point I decide, there we go, yeah, I've decided to put the uh, sleep into the reset function with a time, with a sleep argu argument, which makes a lot more sense. So, there you go, so T and then sleep T, perfect. So, those are simple ones done. So I'm sort of figuring out which way to do it. So it'll have to be left first to start actually working. So, to that end, rs.setbundoutport, blah 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 blah, and then we can port uh, move L. I've remembered, I've forgotten the name, so that's my ferret squeaking there. I don't know if you heard that. There you go, and then we reset the redstone straight afterwards. Um, now, the next thing that needs to happen, what am I doing? Why am I typing weird things? Oh, okay, so I'm making a new function. I've had the idea to make a new function uh, to trigger intermediate. Now the idea behind trigger intermediate is that it triggers the weird sort of intermediate bit to move a little bit, if you understand me. So it, it means that the um, the intermediate frames 
uh, the part that actually moves the machine um, needs to also move. Couldn't figure how it's spent, spelt intermediate there, so I double checked. And then if you watch this now, I call uh, interstep, don't I think? Yeah, interstep, and then square brackets. Uh, for uh, no, not f oh, I don't. I don't have a variable for it, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna create a new variable now. So current step. So to begin with, current step equals first step. There we go. So now I'm trying to think of a clever way to um, switch between one and two without having to do an if statement. there come on there you go so math dot absolute it should be a lowercase m if anybody's watching so that'll be a problem when i come to run the program the idea is that uh, if i want to switch between one and two i can just do uh, two minus three is minus one and then i use math dot absolute which changes it to a positive number so and if two if uh, current step equals one and i take three off it becomes minus two Math dot absolute turns it to a positive number, so it becomes two. So it means I don't have to use if statements to change between those two numbers. So it'll either be one, uh, one or two. Let's go flying around like a mentalist. Everyone's got magic rings except for me. Good. I don't want magic rings. Magic. Sell yourself a bit of flying. Mm. What's wrong with a good old fashioned jetpack, eh? I ask you. Right now, I think I've realized that the trigger intermediate has to sometimes happen at the beginning or sometimes happen at the back, depending on, uh, sorry, last, uh, depending on what direction we're going in. So if we're going left uh, and then we change to go right, then it needs to change order, doesn't it? The only thing I actually don't think ever did make it into the program is I think it needs to move one step further now that I think about it, uh, which is a special condition I'm going to have to think about. <gasps> Excuse me. So here we go. I'm remembering what direction it's going in so I know. My first idea is just to put the, um, the direction variable uh, or direction colored cable. Ugh, they blocked me in. And now Nipty's going to get it. Plum push me off there so Nipty's going to die. Come here, Nipty. Yes! <laughs> I leave Garth alive so you can tell the tale. Okay, so now I'm sort of, um, like I've just said, sometimes trigger intermediate needs to be at the front, or it needs to be first, sometimes it needs to be second. So the idea is that I'm um, flipping it. I'm adding an if at the beginning and if at the end. It's not the perfect solution, um, but it does work. Nipty's trying to push me off now because I killed him. So if D doesn't equal current direction, then uh, trigger intermediate. So if D is the current direction, just do the intermediate. If it isn't, do it later, do it after you've um, triggered the side. Okay, and then if that's the case, current direction equals D. Let's run it and see what happens. Error. Brilliant! <laughs> so at line three, there's an error, no loop to break. Okay, so <laughs> what I've used there is a keyword. So I shouldn't have used the word break for my um, uh, for my functions, so uh, or variables. So I've just sort of renamed those. And see what happens. So new error at line 33. Close bracket expected. Close line on 32 to close open bracket on line 32. So that's that one there. RS dot set bundled output side into step current step. There we go. Close brackets and run again. Attempt to index no. Now this one is because I love errors, don't you? Errors are amazing. Uh, this one. I think is because of um, uh, me calling interstep or current step wrong. So I'm doing lots of silly debugging now to see if I can figure out why the hell it's not working. The actual problem is caused by me using math with a capital M instead of math with a um, lowercase m. It's as simple as that. There is no capital M math um, API in Lua. It's lowercase m. Yep. Yeah. I still make those mistakes. 
So I'm basically I'm using print to try and figure out what's going wrong to see if any of those variables come through. So saving it, running it. So there's, that number came through. In fact, why is it 8192? That's confusing, isn't it? Oh wait, yeah, 8192 is uh, green in, that's what green, uh, colors.green equals. Okay, so now I've sort of real. I think I'm going to come to the conclusion. There we go, lowercase n, run it, something happens. There we go. So it moved. Uh, it didn't quite move as much as I wanted it to, but it did move. So it moved once, I think. So it did try again, but... Um, It's wrong right now, so I'm, I'm trying to reset it. So, um, left, I need to go, I need to trigger white, don't I? Colors dot white, run it, so it's gone left a bit, uh, right a bit, sorry. And I need to do it again, I think. No, okay, don't bother then. <laughs> okay, so, not entirely sure what I'm about to do. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, I think I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to create a file on the computer to save the position of everything on, um, in the game. Oh, sorry, in, uh, on, for the machine. So that the machine no, uh, saves out all of its variables, um, when it's done something. The idea, idea being that the reason why that didn't work was because it didn't all the re variables were reset when I ran the pr uh, program again. So I need to create a save file and read file function that saves the variables, if you understand. So um, here what I'm doing is I'm just creating a handle, that's why it's called hwrite, um, by opening a file. So fs file system dot open and then the name of the file name, which is file name at the top there is uh, variables.txt. Um, comma and then in speech marks w now that w stands for uh, writable so it means that it'll open a file that is writable for me so i can write to it so what i'm doing here is the first thing i'll write to it is current step so the value of current step and then i'll do a new line um, which is what that backslash n means um, at the moment that's the only variable i think i need to write so i'm doing that now so I've closed it. You always have to close a file. If you do not close the file, it will not be runnable anymore. You, you have to, um, I think, either shut down the computer or maybe even restart the server if you forget to close a file because it can really mess things up. Because it, um, it, makes, it, it makes that file unopenable again. So as you can see that I've used an assert, which um, if the file can't be opened, uh, for any reason, it will crash the program and tell me um, that the file couldn't be open. It'll just say assert failed, which is all you really, really need. So, uh, current step, um, I, as I've opened that, you see um, local hread equals assert, uh, file system.open, file name, and then the R, which means it's read only. I'm not write, I don't want it writable. There's no point opening it writable if you're going to use it writable. So, in this case, um, I'm reading the lines and putting them into the variable. So current step equals hread.readline. And then every time you read a line, it deletes the, that line from the machine. Uh, sorry, from the text file. Um, uh, or at least from the handle variable that you've got. The, the text file retains all the information, but the um, the handle that you get with hread equals uh, fs.open, that changes. Okay, so with that handled now, I'm going to move on to do something else. I'm not sure what my problem is right now. Oh yeah, I think my problem. Yeah, my problem is right now that I need to remember the current direction that it was moving in. Now the problem with that is I can't save out a function um, into a text file, which is um, what I'm using in the if statement at the moment. So I need to uh, equate. Um, D into a string. It's not a very nice um, solution again, but it works and it's a, it's just a little bit hacky. So right now I'm changing that to D string, so it's a string representation of the variable D. Okay. 
So that should work. I think I'm gonna test it now. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reset everything back all the way to the left now. Okay, so yeah, just resetting it. Although the variables are still left on and I'm trying to figure out why it's not working, why it's not working, it's broken, oh my god, ah! But no, I've just left the variables on, I need to zero it out first. There we go, and zero. And now it works. Ah, of course it does. I think I also need to do red, don't I? Yeah. Because it needs to be back at zero, because it's not. Ah, as you can see as well, the sorter and the chest next to it um, hasn't moved. As nifty. <laughs> Just having a look. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking a long time to think of this, but I think I might be talking to nifty. There we go. So, yeah, colors dot red, and now everything's back at zero. This is this is the very end that it can possibly go to. So reset everything. Or oh, oh, don't forget to. That's perfectly fine. So red's still on, by the way. I'm not sure what I'm, what variable I'm about to add. Oh, that's right, I'm going to count the number of steps now. There we go. So I think that's 23? 27. I think it was 27. Let's count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay. So that's the phone. I don't know if you can hear the phone. I'm going to ignore it. So charge my jetpack up because it's just run out of batteries again. Um. <laughs> Let me shut the door. Max L27, so I'm making the max location as 27, the current location is 1. And then I'm remembering it in the, in the uh, save file. Okay, so I think that's all the variables I need. I've got my jetpack now, so I can uh, fly around a bit more, which is more fun. Not sure if I had any more variables. I think I'm ready to try and loop it now. So, yep, going down to the bottom, I'm going to do a four loop to move between max and minimum. So, four uh, I equals current location, which I'll be getting from the save file. Uh, max L. Um, uh, and a minimum L, that's always a good idea, isn't it? Uh, can remember the name of my variables again. So break stuff, place stuff. What I might do is actually move that into one variable or one function. Um, so do stuff or something like that. Uh, the idea being that um, at the moment when you see the program run or when you see the machine work, it um, takes a long time to do it because it does one, wait 0 0.7 of a second, does another one, wait 0 0.7 of a second. It's not really ideal. So, what am I doing now? Am I resetting? Ah, yeah, I remember to reset red. Uh, I just didn't do it at the time for some reason. Do, do, do. One's always laughs at me for making that noise. Do, do, do. Oh, so now I'm, I'm making it go backwards. So, current location, minus one. So for each loop, take something off I. The only thing I have forgotten to do, though, which you'll love, is, in fact, no, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you guess what I've forgotten to do, and uh, you'll be, maybe you'll be able to tell me what I did wrong, although I will point it out. So, right now, without watching any more, in the comments, tell me what you think I did wrong. Because this isn't going to work. So there's an error there at line 65. I'm sort of guessing line 65. There we go. I put two equals in where you shouldn't do. There you go. So that's fine. Have a look. And then oh, I went backwards. Why did it go backwards? What's going on? Why is this happening? What is this craziness? So it's moving too fast, basically. The... Um, <laughs> how is that happening who knows but it's uh i think it's caused by um the frame motors not uh triggering 
quick enough. Or sorry, they're triggering in fact too quickly. I think that's that's the problem. It's stopping the, um, the other frame loads from uh, letting anything happening happen. Sorry, not happening. So I just move that over to see what happens. There we go. So that they're not stuck. So the only possible explanation is. Um, So everything's working. Only a possible explanation is that it was moving too fast and it couldn't handle it. So that's why I'm going to try and fix now. And I only just think of actually just using different colored wires instead of uh, there we go. Instead of having to program it every time I want to reset the machine. Ho ho ho. Edit farm system. Silence. I'll get rid of those prints for now because they were annoying me. And um, somewhere, ah, there we go. So I'm plopping in a sleep just to slow it down a little bit because I seem to go, I wasn't working. And there we go, we're getting some movement. Awesome. But then suddenly it stops working. Why has it stopped working? Oh my goodness, why? I'll tell you why. The god darn wheat is uh, stuck to the bottom of the machine because it's not actually um, breaking anything because I haven't hooked up the wireless um, cable you do that yet uh, the wireless uh, transmitters to send the signal to uh, blue and brown gosh darn um, frames are sticking to the wheat underneath itself so it won't work and I don't actually figure this out for ages <laughs> it's quite funny how long it takes me to figure that out or at least I I've had this problem multiple times so far. I had it in part one, for God's sake. Yeah, for some reason, I've gone upstairs. What am I Maybe I think I've forgotten something. I need to get something from the sorting machine. Oh, here we go. I'm checking the timing of the temp door just to make sure I get it right. So it's 0 0.8 uh, between um, frame movements. So it's 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4. So I'm, I'm like, oh, do I really have to go in and add 0 0.1 to everything? Ugh. Yeah, you do. I think I'll just make it one second to be sure. Um, good practice is if you're using a float number, um, like a full number um, with a decimal point, it's always nice to put 0 0.0 at the end of the number, just so you know that it's definitely working. Or it definitely will work. I do 0 0.8 there, but then I decide actually just to be safe to 0 0.1. Sorry, 1.0. 1 0.0. 1 .0. No, 1.0. There we go. So 0 0.1. I just made the same mistake twice. 10. Wow. Let's just make numbers up. Wow. Well, actually, 10 is a number, isn't it? I didn't make that up. Wow. Okay. Sort of. Trying to figure out why it may not be working, but it really should be working. Why is it not working? I'll pull my hands out. Oh well. Do do. So I'll try again. Seems to be working. And then it stops. Seems to be working. Yay, it's working. Oh, it's gone on without it. Damn it, why? Because the wheat's getting stuck to the bottom. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I think it's the program, but why haven't I even tried to see if the frames will move? Uh, and that's no good, is it, Liam? Because the frames are going to go there, so you'll get stuck. That's right. No, that's not right. I still haven't figured it out. So I'll put those in, and then I'll put the wires in, and then I'll realise, after setting all this up, that it's rubbish and it's not going to work. So, here we go. So, uh, red, I think. Not working. You can't move. It will not move. Red isn't working because the frames are stuck on the wheat. <laughs> Come on, glitch. Frames are stuck on the wheat. Stop flying around like an idiot. Like this video if you think I'm being a moron. I even looked at it then. Wow. So now I'm like... It's green even coming through. It's a green, it's a green frame. It's green. Oh, maybe the signal's not working. 
Wait, hold on. Did I look at it? Did I have I figured it out? Have I figured it out? I think I figured it out. Yeah, no. What the hell am I doing? No, I haven't figured it out. Oh, God, I should have cut this. This is so embarrassing. Any moment now. It must be getting stuck somewhere, said Glitch. Oh, God damn it, said Glitch. It's the wheat. It's getting stuck on the wheat. Ah, I'm so angry. That was what that shake was there. So put some covers down. Cover it up so it doesn't stick to the wheat. There's a good lad. Red block. Put that last one in. Okay, so let's test red. That's white. Fool. Red. White. Green. <laughs> and then I realise I'm going to have to get rid of those wires because the damn things are going to be in the way. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and let's test it. And there it goes. So it's actually going over the farm. Hooray! Amazing. It works. So I'll stop the machine, bring it back, and then all I need to do is hook up the appropriate uh, wires and stuff for... Um, the uh, I'm doing. Oh, I'm just saying why, so I can do it properly. There you go. Yeah. So now all I need to do is set up the appropriate um, uh, wires and receivers and stuff uh, to actually make it get the wheat. But now I've decided I'm sick of having to put wires down. I'm going to go get some uh, cobblestone so that I can um, make some levers and just actually debug this thing properly. So <laughs> I just dig a hole in the side of Will's farm. That's fine. So. Oh, my inventory is so rubbish. Why don't I put things in the bag? Uh, I'm throwing things back into the hole. <laughs> Amazing. There we go. Cover up the holes. I got the things back. Awesome. Don't care about the sticks. Leave those sticks alone. Hey, Fletcher. Leave those sticks alone. Okay, so I'm putting some levers down. Like a boss. A second now, and stop being such a fairy. <laughs> there we go. So now it's like green, white, red, white, green, white, red, white. Carry on uh, as much as you like with that one. White, green, no red, white, green, white. All right, fine. Don't finish it off the dickhead. Come on. There you go. White. Red. It's red. It's definitely red. No, not green, you fool. It's red. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm sort of thinking what else is left to do. I'm sort of pat myself on the back after doing such an awesome job of taking forever to write this program. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So I'm setting up the. Um, oh, that's on. Why is that on? I say. Oh, because I cancelled the program, didn't I? Uh, yep. There we go. All right. Start setting the output. Zero. Done. Job done. Why don't I make a program that does that? Set the. Uh, there. Six hundred and twenty for the brown. Didn't even need to know it because I've got it set there. And then the other one. Awesome. So now, if I run it, I should do it. So, excellent. Watch. Yeah, look at that wheat go. Oh, how awesome is that? There's no seeds in the deployers yet. Um, but it's just, oh, everything else is going to take no time at all to set up. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. I really enjoyed making this machine. If you like these videos, please um, let us know and we'll carry on making them. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, so good. Oh. I'm so proud.